Hello, welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah, and today I wanted to tell you about our current flock of sheep. In a previous episode, Rick and I gave the little background on how we became shepherds, um, and you can see that, uh, just scroll back in the channel. And our flock has evolved over the last few years um, as we've kind of changed direction and taken on different projects. Um, so we started with uh, Navajo churro sheep. They're the oldest breed in North America, and that's what our mentor um, was raising. Um, and so it was, it was just easy to kind of take that on. Um, she knew a lot about the breed and, of course, had sheep for sale. Um, and they were a cool breed to start with. Um, I have to say, no regrets there. Um, they are a specialty breed. They, their wool is actually double-coated and they have this thick hairy fiber um, kind of like an Icelandic sheep um, an outer coat that sheds water and uh, repels dirt and helps them um, kind of be an all-weather sheep um, but that uh, type of fiber doesn't lend itself very well to hand spinning so we tried for a few years to sort of find a market for um, that specialty wool and you know I was also getting to know wool myself and wool markets, and so perhaps if I'd had a little more experience at the time, I could have made a better go of it. But um, we finally decided to get out of that breed and turn towards um, hand spinning and more knitter knitterly yarns, um, because that's, of course, I'm a knitter and that's what I like. Um, and I think if you're passionate about something or you know more about it, then you're going to more easily be able to sell that too. Um, so we got a few Shetlands um, from Linda Doan, who was actually the first person to bring Shetlands into the U.S. Um, from Scotland. Uh, that was back in the 1980s, and she just happens to live down the road from us. Um, so we got some Shetlands from her. Um, a cool sheep, um, fairly easy to keep, um, but the ones we happened to get were very skittish and hadn't been handled a whole lot. Um, and so that made them a little bit tricky to work with. Anytime we needed to get them in the barn for shearing or, you know, a health check or anything like that, it was a real production. Um, they were certainly smarter than we were, um, which is not necessarily a good thing in livestock. So um, I eventually sort of got frustrated with that and offered them as um, free sheep on a listserv. And I, I did disclose, um, you know, their temperament. Um, but fortunately, we were able to rehome them with a larger flock and uh, I, the owner has told me that they've calmed down since then. So I think just big, being part of a bigger flock really helped. Um, after the Shetlands, we got a couple of fin sheep, which are similar um, to the Shetlands in terms of their fiber type. Um, and their overall body type is very similar. Um, you have this short-tailed European land race of sheep that kind of got divided up um, as Vikings and other settlers were going around Europe uh, thousands of years ago, um, <clears throat> they would deposit sheep here and there. Okay, well, we've got sheep on this island. We'll come back next spring or summer and pick a few up. And Okay, we need to go on a long journey. Let's put a few sheep on the boat and take them to the next place. So you've got kind of Finn sheep, Shetland sheep, Icelandic sheep. They all share some characteristics, and then they've all kind of diversified or diverged um, since since the original land race sheep. Um, so fins are in that, that group. Um, and they have a nice soft fleece. It's very nice for hand spinning. Um, like the Navajo churros and the Shetlands, um, they come in a wide range of natural colors. And um, the two we got are actually show sheep. And so they're extremely friendly, um, which is a really nice change of pace. It's actually calmed down. The one Shetland we did keep, it's calmed her down because she's now around these really mellow, kind of dog-like sheep that like to be pet a lot. Um, and that's uh, Phoebe and Annie are their names. Um, yeah, they come up and get scritches, even from strangers, people they don't know. They'll just let you pet them. Um, they're always begging for treats. So that's really fun to have. And then another um, key element in our flock is the llamas. And we mentioned them in the last video, but didn't really explain why llamas. Um, so in Vermont, we have a lot of predators. Um, we have hawks and fox and coyotes and stray dogs, fisher cats, all kinds of things. 
um, that like to eat baby lambs and even will attack adult sheep. Um, we also have bear that live up on the hill behind us. Um, but they don't bother our flock because we have our bodyguards, our two big llamas. And the advantage of having some kind of large animal in with your sheep is that um, it's all about intimidation. That presence, that large animal there, a little coyote or a small predator is going to look at that and go, mm, maybe I'll get lunch somewhere else. Um, llamas are naturally territorial. They naturally look out at their surroundings and keep an eye on things. And when they see something they, they aren't sure about or they don't like, they charge towards it. So rather than running away, they're going to face it off. Um, they don't need special feed or special vet care outside of what the sheep need. So unlike um, a, a guard dog um, or a livestock guardian dog, um, they don't need a lot of special different kind of care than mm. the flock. Mm. And they, of course, give fiber. Um, our llamas actually come from a fiber farm, so they don't have a lot of the llama guard hair. Their fiber is very much like an alpaca. So I've um, had a number of yarns made with a blend of wool mm. and llama fiber, and that's turned out really nicely. Um, so that's why we went with llamas. Um, but I know other people who have donkeys, a cow, a horse, um, guard dogs, you know, so you can do what, what works well with your farm and your current setup. But if you are in a ter territory with high predation, I recommend getting some kind of big guard animal. Um, but yeah, our fiber flock is at, so Cusco and Guinness are the two llamas and um, they look after the sheep. They consider them their sheep. And if they sense danger or anything, they'll round everybody up and make them go to a certain place. Um, and they're skeptical of strangers. They have kind of an aloof um, attitude when you go into the paddock to hang out with the sheep. They kind of come over and size you up, but they're not really into like being petted or anything like that. Um, but they're good boys. They do a good job. And we're grateful to have them. Yeah, so I don't know uh, if plans will change in the future, but right now we just have our little lawn mowers. Um, they keep the view open, they keep sunlight coming to our garden, and we really enjoy looking out and seeing the sheep and llamas grazing. Um, so thanks for joining me, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more information about our farm. Um, and coming up, we'll have some more episodes on other topics. Thanks for watching.